Okay. Um, <laughs> shall, shall we make a start? Shall I make a start? So I'll, I'll do a do a quick demonstration this morning and keep in. So it's staying with your own projects and staying with working from your own images. Um, and I'm, I'm sticking with the black and white. So, last couple of weeks I've used charcoal, first landscape, and then last week um, portrait. Uh, so, I thought this week I would um, do a little bit of demonstrating with ink, ink or ink or watercolour, but just using a tone leaf, just light and dark. So, you could use a colour light and dark, or just a black. So, that's the idea. Um, I, a lot of my sketches that I do, I use I use pens. So this is just like a felt pen, very quick pen sketch, um, just to work out composition. So that's a really nice, quick way of working. I thought what I'd do today is just demonstrate using um, different pens and ink or watercolour. So you could use watercolour. So the, basically, the difference is if I use watercolour, I just use the black. Um, some inks are what they call permanent, so once they dry, you won't be able to rehydrate them. Okay, so some inks are like that, and others are water soluble, so basically put the ink down and then you can sort of leave it off. Um, I think I've probably got a mixture here. So if it says Indian ink, which this one does, this one, when I open it up, is a bit old and, and manky, but this one, once it's dry, it should stay put. So if you put the lines down, they should dry and that will stay there. Um, these pens I've made myself out of bamboo. It's just the ordinary garden bamboo. I've just cut them to an angle and then just got a standing knife and shot on them up a bit. So I've got a few of these here if you want to try these. Um, they're pretty easy to make. You just need a, a fairly strong knife though. Um, now to demonstrate this, I'm going to have a real job to be honest doing this virtually. Yeah, I was thinking about Because <laughs> ink just doesn't. You know, it, it just yeah. will run straight off paper. So this bit I'm gonna have to just do on a bit of paper. Um, so I, use, I think I've got a bit more ink in here. So if I say what, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do this like this. So. so something like the trees, if I can hold that like that. Yeah, you, you basically need to hold the pen Sort of an angle bit like that, otherwise you're just not going to get anywhere. Um, which obviously, so you get marks a little bit like that. You know, they can be quite quite blobby. They're they're quite um, and actually, if you are working this on a and then as, as the pen dries, you get a little bit of the texture of the paper showing through. So I, I quite like that. I quite like the, the fact that the line is quite quite varied. Um, a bit like that. The other thing you can do hiya, um, is you can thin the ink with a little bit of water. So if you wanted some very lighter coloured lines or lighter tone lines, so you, you can vary the, the lightness and darkness, which I rather like. I like the look of that. Um, the, the main problem with ink is it's just such a mess, as a, such a messy medium. So that, that was the line part there, so we can just leave that like there. Now you could let that dry and just do all your line work first. Um, and then I would use a brush. Um, so I've got here, this is a little bit being diluted. So I, I can use that in a really big brush to start with. Okay, okay. So I can work some of these, these bigger, you know, bigger areas of tone. There's not too much line there. I'll let that sort of in there. Um, the other nice thing about this is, if you could you not come straight on colour, you could just really explore brushwork, textures, you know, it could be like you might want a little bit of stippling in places or something like that. Um, There's just like less to think about. So I'm going to go for a slightly smaller brush there. Um, and then these, these areas up the top here, where we've got lots of little Leaves. I might want to just sort of draw out the few leaves like that, a few dots to suggest leaves. 
Something like that. And then we've got some sort of broader areas across here. So pop some of those in. And then back to a few little dots and dashes. And what I would suggest, if you're drawing or trying to paint trees, don't try and paint every leaf, because some areas are just like broad masses. You can, these little dribbles, you can lift these out if you want, or you might want to just leave those. People are quite effective. And maybe just a few suggestions of odd leaves at the edge. And then I think that a little bit stronger. So it's just dipped in the ground there, and I can work that in. <coughs> And then perhaps thicken up in some of these lines of stronger tree trunks. Okay, this uh, is not going to look as strong as still. So it's a nice sort of dark brown, and we might also get a little bit of black mixed in with that, just to get a slightly darker tone. That's probably about as dark as it would normally go. You mix brown and black for the brown. Well, I, have, I, I just want to get the brown a little bit. The, the brown is, I think, a little bit thin down, but I'll, I'll generally, uh, yeah, go a little bit. Actually, that's not so strong there. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, so I've got, I've got some sort of thin tree trunks, but I can also uh, let's go thicker, sort of dark and shadows down here. Ideally, you have your, your board at a little bit of an angle. This is a, a difficult and awkward angle to, to sketch out. But you can see the, the sort of things that you can do. And I've got these two examples in. This, this one, although it's got a tiny bit of colour, it's very much a total image. So this was um, some of the sheds, cockle sheds over the lee, and a tree, which um, apparently is all better than that. But again, this, this got stuff, this was really just a quick sketch I did. Um, so the lines, I think, the, um, in the ink in the distance, and then here I made the ink a little bit stronger tone, so it gives you that sense of tone of the session. And then the other other bits are just some even watercolour or ink with a, with a brush. That's that one. Um, this one is just all watercolour. So again, single scene for this. Um, leaving the white of the paper for the whites and the light, and then just gradually going darker. So these pale washes in the distance to start with. Then slightly darker, slightly darker again. And then. So there's probably about four or five tones there. So it's a great way of just trying to isolate maybe four or five tones and decide where you want to put bits the, bits the different tones. So that is just left white. This is just white paper. Yeah. 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 So for watercolours, the idea is using the white of the paper as much as possible yeah. for the white. And um, if I found I needed a highlight, say down here, I might just get a bit of white paint and pop it in. Yeah. But where I've just left gaps, so where you can obviously yeah. leave gaps. Yeah. And what you've got is that lovely transparent feel. Yeah. Which, um, you know, if you mix white with it, it'll go quite up. So it's a different look. Both yeah. nice, but, you know. Did you draw that first, or did you go straight in with your watercolours? I think I've gone straight in watercolour, yeah. Yeah, so, but you could do, if you wanted to get a pencil and just position the main, yeah. main features, you could do that. Yeah. But these are really good exercises. Anybody wants to learn more to colours, I'll do you know, you know, 15, 20 of these, you know, different subjects and just work tonally. Yeah. Um, I was kind of hoping Kevin would be here because Kevin really he's uh, yeah. struggled a little bit with the tones. And these this is such a good exercise if you start out in more colours. Um, you can get so confused with all the colours. And actually, you know, black and white makes a really strong image. You don't yeah. need and you can see actually with this one, this has got a tiny bit of colour, but it's there wasn't that much more colour there really. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fact, you know, it was it was sort of mud flats from the sheds and this tree was something quite sort of dark, you know, probably the lights behind it, so it's silhouetted anyway. So you can achieve an awful lot of the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Might be a good exercise. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why I'm sort of recommending it. Okay. Yeah, go. I know uh, you've demonstrated a fair few times now the masking that it is. Yeah. I still can't get to grips with it properly. Yeah. When I peel it off, it, it still doesn't get the effect I want. Is there any way to demo that again? Yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if I've got any with me. 
Yeah, I've got a bit here. So, I can sort of demonstrate it to, to an extent, but obviously it will dry. Yeah, I've got course, away, yeah. then yeah. away from dry. So basically we're going to have some food. Um, so this is like a rubbery solution. Um, this particular one I bought, I think it's not as good as the last one I had. I think I prefer the Winston Newton. I bought this one because it was blue and it will show up. So basically if I want to keep, so these white highlights here, I could paint in this masking fluid like this. Anywhere that I want to keep the white. Um, and it will be really good. Say, say these little bits of dappled light, you know, if I wanted to keep that high there and, and down here, and maybe a few bits across here. Um, you've got to put it on in a way that, and then I'm just going to wash that. Now it does tend, you can, as it gets older in particular, it really mullers the brushes. Um, mm -hmm. I've heard some students say about putting soap on your brush to start with, but I've never bought that because it's only kind of soap. Wash that through. Yeah, I don't have it with me, but. Could, I, suppose it could go down there. I don't really like the idea of washing up with wooden soap. <laughs> but I find that just wash your brush to start off with, get it wet down, so that once you put it in the masking fluid, and it always seems to work for me, and then just dry that off. Then once you, you put the masking fluid on, it's, it's going onto a damp brush, so it's unlikely. The problem where is where it dries just here where the dry meets the wet. Mm. If it's all wet, I've never had any problems with it drying like that. So if I had say some the trees that are highlighted, something like that. Um, you don't want to put it on too thick, that's probably a bit thick there. It's just got a couple of paper really, and that will do. And then you know immediately wash it out of the brush. It's worth having two pots of water, one with the masking fluid, so that you're not mixing that in with your paint. Um, but as I say, get it. You know, it needs to be a decent brush, but don't go to spend a fortune and just get cheap, you know, nylon one from the works or something like that. Um, so that's then got a dry perfectly well. Um, I don't let's see if I've got I don't think I've got any examples there. I've got a masking fluid on already. Um, they say not to leave it on too long, but I've managed to get it off even after a year or two. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The, the paper, so yeah. using the coloured one is probably the way to go for me. I think, it, I think it's right. The, the only problem I have with this one is sometimes the colour seems to come out of the paper, which they've oh, got the base to. Oh. Um, I don't know. To be honest, I don't, mostly I've used it for demo, looks like this. But when I go out painting, I don't, I just do quick sketches, so I don't really want to wait for this to dry, yeah. then put a wash on, then I've got to let, wait for the wash to dry before I wipe that off. I suppose if it's a really hot, hot, drab day, it's going to dry quite quick. But you, yeah, it is like being patient. It's got to be, it's got to be completely dry. Otherwise, if I put a wash over this, which I'll just demonstrate, the chances are it will start to, yeah, start to mix and lift off the, the fluid. So it's really got to be nice and dry. Um, but once that is dry, you just put more washes over there. Let it dry completely, and then I should be able to just rub it lightly. That, that's nearly, yeah, that sort of touch dry there. That, that's, I'm picking a bit of it off. I'll just uh, demonstrate a little bit up here. This bit here is nearly dry. So I could put a wash over there. How about it? Let's go a bit darker. And then you can see where, where I've left, where it is, you can, you can see it. So once that's dry, I can then rub that off. Mm -hmm. But again, this has got to be perfectly dry, otherwise the wash mixes in with what's there. How long approximately does it take to dry? It depends how warm it is and things like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, well, yeah, it's just it's, it's latex basically. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a rubber solution. This this is yeah. drying. Yeah, I mean that is that's probably touch dry there. Mm -hmm. But then I've got it's how long to dry the watercolour or the wash there. So whatever that takes. But yeah, it's a warmish day, a few minutes, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for me, for ske quick sketches, which actually is what that was already, I wasn't too worried. And probably for any bits of white, where, you know, where I haven't left the paper, 
like this one was really more of a channel exercise. I'll probably just paint in a tiny bit of white. Some people are a bit precious about that and consider it not proper watercolours yeah. or purest watercolours. There's all sorts of. It still looks good. <laughs> well, I mean, I haven't used any white on that. It is just terrible, but you could do it if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, but a bit of gouache, yeah. I like the gouache because it really is a very old paint. And really pastel, possible. maybe. Pastel. Pastel, you could put on, yeah, pastel, yeah. yeah. Make it a mixed media thing, yeah. And you can have gel, white gel pens, are they any good? Could do that, yeah. yeah. Or even a bit of acrylic, anything we've got. Yeah. Yeah, acrylic. Yeah. 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 <coughs> that could be too much if it's acrylic, do you think? Because it's might. a bit stock. Yeah, and it might be a bit shiny as well. Yeah. Probably, probably go ash is best. Yeah. Um, you can get the white watercolour, but I don't think it's quite as opaque. <laughs> okay, yep. Thank you. We'll try it that way.